Welcome back to What's Up Cuz. How do your boys feel about their sister having a boyfriend? But I would be doing the same thing! Yes. You don't get along with me, there's a problem. <laughs> your family's opinion matters. Buddy had unexpected foot surgery. If you like the guy, go talk to him. That's probably the advice I would've gave too, I have to say. No, not at all. I raised her well, yeah. Erica. You made a good call. That's how I would approach it. She gets the days, I get the nights. Before she goes, I wanna answer this first. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to What's Up Cuz. I am your co-host, Erica Spera. And I'm Lisa Velastro. And we have a great episode for you guys this week. It's just gonna be us two answering your questions. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one talking over me. No, yeah, you know, sometimes I'm like, wait, let me finish, you let them finish answering and then I'll, I'll, I'll put my two cents in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, it can get chaotic the more people you have. But uh, as always, what's the update this week? What, anything new? Um, I mean, nothing really new. I mean, I'm team mom for football. So, oh, you know, okay. I, I feel like I've encountered a full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of kids on the team. It's just you? Uh, no, there's uh, two other moms. So okay. we kind of split, the, uh, split yeah. the duties. Still work. But there's, you know, 45 kids on the team. And, you know, we home games require tailgates and coordination of who's bringing what. And then... Every week before a game, the team has a, you know, football dinner. So it's coordinating really? that. Um, you know, so it's a lot of coordination back and forth, you know, parts. And then, you know, when you have other moms that you're doing it with, you, you don't want to make the decision on your own. So it's a lot of back and forth. But you know what? I see it as it's, it's a time in my life that I'm enjoying because my boys play football. Yeah. And Wait, so you have to coordinate tailgates for the parents as for well. For the tailgate. Yeah. So it's the tailgates uh, are for the parents and families. Wow, this is elaborate. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We we try to, you know, go all out for these boys. And uh it's fun. And, and I just found out this week, my little one came home to tell me that he is the team water boy now. Really? Yeah. So I got three boys on the field, which is so much fun. It's so cute. That's cute. How did Carlo like uh doing it? He Absolutely loved it. Really? You know, he was so attentive. And every time someone would yell out, water, water, you'd see him run out to the field with his water bottle. Oh, he runs out to the field? He runs out to the field. Oh, that's great. He was so nervous. He was like, mom, what about if I mess up? I'm like, you're not going to mess up. Uh -huh. Just, you know, make sure you're listening. And as soon as you hear the word water, you run out to the field. Yeah. So it was cute. It was it was actually adorable. For the first time, all three of my boys were on the football team. Yeah. I were on the football field. That's so cute. Or also, I mean, if he has to go to the games anyway to watch, it's like, I'd well, rather be part of the action. You that's know? the thing. So Carlo was not going to many games because <laughs> if you know Carlo, you know he's not really my sports fanatic yeah. kid, which is okay. He loves, he's into other things. You know, every child is different. And it's funny because Carlo is at the same school now for the first time that his siblings are in and that's Sophia graduated from. Huh. But it's, you know, a lot of the same teachers and they all every time they see me now, they're like, I cannot believe how different all four of your kids are. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know. And my youngest is completely different. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to hear. And uh, I'm just excited. I'm excited that, you know, Carlo is getting a little bit taste of some sports. Yeah. Because I think that, you know, even though I, I tried when he was younger, putting him in the soccer and the t-ball and all that, he just wasn't into it like the other kids were. Mm -hmm. But now that he's older and the school where he is at actually requires the middle schoolers to do a sport. Oh, really? You have to I do like. one. You have to do a sport for each season. Oh, is that like in lieu of gym class? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, I had friends that had schools like that that yeah, I had in college. So yeah, so I actually really like that because he started with flag football. Okay. And he all seems right. to like it. And he, on his own, is now the water boy for the football team. <laughs> so he's getting out there, which I'm enjoying watching. Yeah, that's so fun. Also, you have to feel so cool with it's all the older so kids. It's so cool. Yeah, it's that so was, cool. That was like there was um, the local college. I grew up in Binghamton. Uh, there was a sports camp for basketball, and I would go to it. And then there also was this thing like you could enter to be the ball girl mm -hmm. for the game. And it's the college game. You're in the big arena. Yeah. And like you literally are doing like you're folding up the warm up <laughs> pants. You're, you're refilling the water bottles. It's the most basic stuff. But you get the little ball girl shirt and you get to yeah. be right on the bench and in all the conversations. And it, it is super fun. I will always remember it. It's so crazy because, you know, this is the first year that I have Buddy and Marco both playing varsity. Oh, right. And so... 
when they're out on the field, I have one of my kids on one end of the line, the other kid on the other end. And now I have my water boy <laughs> that I'm worried about, you know, getting tackled on the sidelines. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, now I got yeah. three kids to watch on the field. Yeah. You're like, pay attention, Carl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a heck of a call to the pediatrician. You're like, well, yeah. the water boy got injured. <laughs> <laughs> Every game, I pray for no injuries. I'm like, please, let's just, let's go through this game. No yeah. injuries, please. Go home to dinner. Yeah. Have you had uh, the whole football team here for the meal? I have. I had the whole football team here before the season started. We we made a great meal for them and we watched the movie American Underdog. Oh, okay. Which I don't know if you ever saw that movie. I haven't, but I've I've seen like clips. Yeah. You know, I thought it was a great movie for these kids to watch prior to their football season. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the meaning of the movie. To me, it was like, you know, you don't give up because, you know, look what happens. If you just keep on trying, and I think that was a good a good thing for them to do prior to their season, right? Yeah, so well, that's great. It was fun. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I'm team mom. I am enjoying myself. I miss I miss the team dinners. You know? Yeah, there was something. Um, I forget. I saw someone. I think they like shared it on Facebook. And it was basically this long quote, and it was like about like, hey, these times that you're tired, you're driving, you're picking up, you're dropping off. You have dirty jerseys all the time, all the <laughs> smells of the Like it was all the like kind of the quote bad stuff yeah. or the busyness. Uh, and it was some mom being like, you're going to miss it so much. Yeah. Because all of a sudden it's quiet. There's none of it. And then like my parents, suddenly they're going to games. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you don't even know a kid on this team. Because <laughs> <laughs> what it feels like. And they're like, it's so-and-so's sister's da-da-da's son. Like, yeah. they're like, you know, but it's it's like, it's just such a, it is kind of weirdly like a family thing. It doing is. Sports, so. uh, and as crazy as it is, especially come, you know, Thursday, Friday, you know, prepping for that dinner and then Saturday game, mm-hmm. I actually crazily enjoy it. Like, yeah. I really enjoy it. And then you got to, if, if you talk to some of the parents that watch me during the game, they're probably saying to themselves, this lady's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Bunkers, do you tailgate if they go to away games too? Uh, no, we don't. No, um, just home games. Just home games. Yeah. But if we go to away games, what we do is we load up their bus with, you know, sacks and food and yes, drinks. Of course. You know, we make sure we do our motherly duties. <laughs> yeah, those uh, teenage boys can eat. They can eat like you and, don't even know. <laughs> and gain nothing. <laughs> yeah. So imagine being the parents to try and coordinate their dinners mm-hmm. the night before a game and wanted to make sure you order enough food, but you don't want like a lot of leftovers either. Mm-hmm. So it's like a it's like a jigsaw puzzle every week. Like, all right, how many are we ordering this? Yeah. And then on top of it, it's supposed to be like pasta dinners. Right. But these boys are getting bored of pasta. Yeah, so. no, you need some meat in there. <laughs> My son turns around to me this week. He goes, so you know, I like to ask them, you know, what do you guys talking about as far as you what do you want for food yeah. you guys want us to switch it up and my son this week goes yeah we all want chipotle i'm like chipotle it's supposed to be a pasta dinner yeah they're like yeah no we're, we're done with the pasta yeah which so, chipotle does cater i found out yeah they do cater um so i'm trying to coordinate that for this week for them and again do we do the burritos or do we do the bowls or do we do there's so many different options yeah. and i'm like you know what I might do like just the simple burritos and get the sides on the on the side. Yeah. So whoever wants to add more stuff to it can, but at least the burritos are wrapped and ready to go, kind of right. thing. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think. You know, forty five boys running into a cafeteria to food. It's like you want a, an organized. Yeah. Fashion. You know. Uh-huh. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's but chaotic, but as chaotic as it is, I love it. Yeah. I look fun. forward to it. What am I going to do when football season's over? Oh boy. I don't know. <laughs> they don't do a winter one, the winter sport or no? Uh, so yeah, my boys do ice hockey. Oh yeah, I forgot so, they do hockey too. But he'll be in ice hockey. Marco, unfortunately, will miss another season of ice hockey this year. Because because of his shoulder? Because he injured his other shoulder during what? football. Oh geez. So he will be going back in for surgery once the season is over. <laughs> oh wow, really? Yeah, he is uh he's playing with an injured shoulder. Um he wears a special brace. Mm-hmm. And we're actually taking him one game at a time. Okay. We're seeing how far we can push it. Only for the simple fact, because honestly, if it was his just his sophomore year and he didn't have a brother who was a senior, he probably would be out for the season already. Mm-hmm. But because this is their only opportunity oh. that they will ever play on a team together, yeah, um, we're fighting through. I get it. You know, it's so nice to see the two brothers on the te- on, on the field together, communicating and. Just having a good time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I know you're going to miss, miss it. That. You're going to miss, gonna miss it. Especially <laughs> football. Football is my favorite sport. It's fun. Especially when the yeah. weather, the perfect fall weather comes. You're like, exactly. This is the best. And then hopefully he'll be healed up for lacrosse season because they'll be on the same lacrosse team oh, yeah. in the spring. All right. Hopefully, if he's ready to go. Okay. We I don't mean, know. We don't know what type of surgery he's going to end up needing and how long the recovery is going to be. It's going to be hard to stop him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Marco, Marco's my, my, probably my kid that needs to be in a sport 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. Buddy too, but Marco more. Buddy started older in life. Right. He was, uh, he was, you know, middle school freshman when he started with sports that he really got into it mm-hmm. where Marco was two years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then also it's always the thing too of having like two older siblings that are around all the time. Mm-hmm. You're just always used to being around a group of people. Exactly. More than anyone else. Mm-hmm. So it's like like my brother's much better at like kind of alone time, introverted time, and I'm more the one that's like, no, I like being around people. Like yeah. if I'm alone by myself too long, I'm like, oh, this start, I start to go stir crazy. Yes. I'm like I need I need some company. Mar- Marco needs people around him 24/7. <laughs> He's been like that since day 1. Yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Fam- family's huge. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we're going to get to some emails for this week. Uh, guys, if you want to send us an email, it's whatsupcuzpod at gmail.com. That's whatsupcuzpod at gmail.com. All right, so this email is called Bilingual Household. Hi, Lisa and Erica. My husband and I have a one-year-old son, Luca, and we are raising him to be bilingual in Italian and English. My husband's side of the family is not Italian, but he understands a little bit, and does, but does not speak it. I'm a stay-at-home mom and speak to him in Italian more than English when we are together. Is it rude to speak to my son in Italian when others around him do not understand the language? Thanks, Sharice. Great Hmm. question, Sharice. Um, So growing up myself in a bilingual household, um, I actually, believe it or not, Erica, went to kindergarten not knowing a stitch of English. Really? I did. And did your parents speak English or they also didn't? They did speak English, but I was the first grandchild. I was the first child in the whole family. Yeah. And my grandparents only spoke uh, Italian Mm -hmm. and they watched watched me a lot. So I basically started my life only knowing Italian. Wow. And it's crazy because you say, how do you remember when you were, you know, six, seven years old? But for some reason... I do remember because I used to be that kindergartner that had to stay after school every day with the teacher. I'll never forget her name was Mrs. Kashmir. Really? (laughs) That was her name because she was teaching me English. Oh, wow. So now fast forward to myself. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm bilingual. Um, You know, I now have my daughter, Sophia. Mm Mm-hmm who my mom is helping me, you know, she's over every day when Sophia was first born and we would speak to her in Italian because I wanted my children to know Italian also. Mm -hmm. Um, So Sophia did know English and Italian at a very young age. But then my son Buddy was born um, shortly after, only 15, they're 15 months apart. And... um, Buddy was a little different. So Buddy did not speak much of anything. (laughs) Yeah, he was always quiet. He was always quiet, didn't really say his first words till later in life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, me as a young mother, because I was was in my early 20s having babies, um, I was so concerned. I remember going to the pediatrician and scared the crap out of me. Because she said, well, what are you speaking at home? I said, we speak Italian and English. She goes, well, you're confusing the kid. Let's pick one language and speak one language to him. So again, being as young as I was, and yeah. I was nervous that my son wasn't speaking, I listened to the doctor mm-hmm. and we completely cut out all Italian. Mm. And we went strictly to English. And um, I kind of regret it because I don't think that was the issue. Yeah. Um, I think just he was developing differently than, mm-hmm. than you know, other kids do or my daughter was did. And he just needed some more time. But yeah, we, we cut out all of the Italian and we stuck to English. And now obviously Buddy and Marco and Carlo really don't speak any English. Right. <laughs> Sophia kind of lost it, mm-hmm. you know, because if you don't use it or keep using it growing up, you really don't pick up on it. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, so I do regret not teaching my kids as much of Italian as I would have liked to. So going back to this question, um, I do not think it's it's rude that you are speaking Italian to your child or whether it be Spanish or French or mm-hmm. I know families that strictly just do French. Right. Um, I think it's wonderful if your child grows up bilingual, trilingual, as many as you can. And I don't think she's doing anything wrong. And if if the family members that don't understand it are offended by it, they really shouldn't be. They should actually be proud that their grandchild or or niece or nephew, whoever it is, is learning another language. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Yeah, I feel like in this scenario, it's rude of like, um, if you're, you know, visiting a family and mm-hmm. they all speak a different language and they keep constantly speaking in that language and leaving you out of the conversation. Yes, that's a different story. That scenario is rude. Yes. But like a kid, I would say like an easy thing if you feel like it's rude is just be like, oh, I asked him, mm-hmm. da, 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 da. Exactly. Because then yeah. also, they also might be like, oh, teach me a little bit too. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's just, con- you know. Communication. Communication. Because it's like, yeah. we all can pick up. We've all been in those scenarios where mm-hmm. everyone's speaking English and suddenly there's a little side combo of something. Yeah. And you're like, well, they're clearly talking about something in this room. <laughs> something that just happened. Yeah. You can sense a little tension. You're like, okay, clearly like, yeah. I don't know if I'm being talked about, but like. Something or something's being kept from me when you're the one that doesn't yeah. speak it. So that's when it gets rude. But like speaking to him in Italian, yeah. period, isn't. Exactly. I've been in those you know? situations at the nail salon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone has <laughs> Everyone has there. And they're like, what? They're like, no, it looks I'm so like, nice. You're like, okay. Are you talking about me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You never know. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, that's when I'd say it's rude. But I feel like with a young son. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. Embrace it. Right. You know, I wish all well, four of my kids spoke Italian. Yeah, and they also say, like, the if you are bilingual and speak two languages, it makes it even easier to speak three, to speak four, and pick it up. And mm-hmm. when they're so young, it's just so easy. They absorb it. Yeah. Like, even the fact that they just sent you to kindergarten, they're like, she'll pick up English. Exactly. She'll pick it up. And exactly. you did. <laughs> yeah. So because I'm, I'm fluent in Italian and English, I could somewhat, believe it or not, speak Spanish. Right. Or read it, at least. I read it, yeah. yeah. But it's funny because the people who speak fluent Spanish tell me that I speak Spanglish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, even like Italian and and even Spanish, there's like people can tell where you're from based mm-hmm. on how you speak it. They'll be like, oh, you're more like Southern dialect. You're more Northern or the slang yeah. is different. But it's even like you just go East Coast, West Coast slang in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Anytime I go to L.A., they say words. I'm like, what? And they're yeah. like, you don't say that? I'm like, no, that's I grew up upstate. I used to say wicked. I'd say that's wicked cool. And people would look at me like I was crazy. Yeah. Like, what do you mean wicked? Yeah, they're like wicked? And I'm like, what do you say? They're like, that's mad cool. I'm like, oh, uh. oh, excuse me. I messed it up. I know. I wish my mom, my mom isn't 100% fluent, but she can understand a lot. Her parents met partly like an English school. Mm-hmm. Where they were learning English. They came over, but they were told speak English at home with your kids because it will make you better. And they pick it up more in the outside world, which was true. So then her parents would speak Italian when they didn't want her to know mm-hmm. what they were saying or what was going on. So yeah. like, weirdly, my mom will know bad words in Italian, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, student, certain gossips and stuff. But uh, I know, but I was like upset. I was like, well, if you were fluent, then I could have been yeah. more fluent situation. Yeah. But it all depends on the time. Like they were kind of like, we don't want to come to America and be the people that don't speak English. Yeah. So they were working on their English so much. But it's like, yeah, it's still... I know. Nice. I, listen, it was with good intentions that I, what I wanted to do with the kids, mm-hmm. but it didn't work out. We tried. Yeah. We I tried. don't blame you. <laughs> but so. uh, all right. I think we have time for one more. This question is called Taking Advantage. Dear Cuz, I love the podcast. Lisa, I hope you and your family and Erica are doing well. Do any of your boys have girlfriends? And if they don't, how would you react if they brought a girl home that you didn't think had good values? I'm asking because my firstborn, who is 18, brought a serious girlfriend home so we could meet her. I got to know her, but I don't think she is genuine. Parentheses, I'm not the only one who thinks that. (laughs) I think she takes advantage of the money he has. I don't know how to talk to my son about it. Any advice is appreciated. Thanks. It's so funny. So um, I do have my son, Buddy, who will actually be 18 in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. And he does have a girlfriend who I have to say I absolutely love. Oh, that's good. That's always good. I do. I really, really like her. Um, I think she's very genuine and very respectful. Um, but in a situation like this, um, you know, what what can you say? 
what can you, so let's just take, make an example of one of my other sons, you know, came home with a girl Mm -hmm. and I didn't think she was for him. There's not much you could say in the beginning because if you start telling your child from the beginning, this is not for you. I don't like her. I don't like her. They're either going to start seeing that person without you knowing Or they're going to be lying to you about stuff that's going on because they don't want you to get more angry or dislike them even more. Right. So I think that you have to ride the wave for a little bit. And I feel like there's always a time and a place to put a little bit of a comment in there. Like you'll find that there will be a time that you could slip in there and say, hey, you know, does she's the, you know, the so and so, did she do this or kind of like not directly go at him with it, but indirectly. Mm-hmm. And if, if you raise your son or your daughter with the values that you want them to have and you want them to give to others, trust me when I tell you they, those things are in their head yeah, and they will eventually realize it on their own. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would just ride it for a little bit. I mean, he's very young. Yeah, it was very young. You know, and and I would give it a couple months, throw a comment here and there in a in a non political way, I guess you could say, <laughs> in a soft way, in a soft way. But trust me, that little soft way is going into their heads. Mm-hmm. And if they're if like I said, if they've been raised with the values that that you've instilled in them, they'll realize it. Yeah, I mean, I think a big part of meeting families isn't necessarily to get the opinion of your parents, but it's more to see how do they interact with yeah, everybody and, exactly. and can they mesh with everybody and just like kind of get along and whatnot. Exactly. Like it's, I don't know. It's, my brother, you know, I remember his now girlfriend, uh, when he like first was brought around, he just was bringing her around. Yeah. He just was like, all right, here's a family party. Mm-hmm. And one of the things he said that he really liked about her is he was like, oh, I likes it. Like, I can go and talk to someone and leave her and she doesn't get all like, where are you going? And also he's like, and she'll herself go talk to Mm -hmm. people, introduce herself, just just be a part of the family essentially. So I feel like the fact that he's bringing her around is kind of good. It's like, okay, yeah, they're bringing them around. They're Mm -hmm. they're also observing. They're not fully oblivious to like how they're interacting with everybody. Exactly. And I feel that if, if it does become serious, I think he will eventually come to you and say, so really, what do you think? Right. And that's when you could sit down and really tell him what you think. But in a way of saying, you're asking my opinion, I'm going to give it to you. Whether you take it or not, it's up to you. Just know that I will always be here to support you with your decision. Right. Yeah. But these are some things that you should look at before continuing, Mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can't go at it and say, I don't like her. She's horrible for you. I don't ever want to see her. Yeah, no. That is going to get nowhere. You got to just ease into it and make them realize, well, this is the way I was raised and this is what I expect. Am I getting that from this person? Right, exactly. And that's it. Yeah. That's all you can do. Yeah. I know, because some people, listen, like we say, someone's meant for everyone. So there's yeah. been plenty of people... I've had friends that dated that I was like, well, they work for you, would not work for me. Mm-hmm. And that's just like, well, not yeah. my life, you know? Exactly. Nothing you can do. It's just harder when it's family, I feel like. Because you're Very like, hard. they will be around exactly. your family all the time. So it's 150%. Different. I agree with you. But again, when they leave, you're not leaving with them. No. Yeah. So if that's what makes them happy, nothing you can do. Yeah. Nothing. Not much you can do. So No. Yeah. Be patient. Get to, get to know. Them, you exactly. Know? Your opinion might change. You never know. You never know. People are nervous. It's a nervous time meeting someone's family the first time. You know? Trust me, nothing has shocked me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, thank you guys for listening and tuning in. Uh, if you want to send us an email, it's whatsupcuzpod at gmail.com. That's whatsupcuzpod at gmail.com. Or feel free to leave a comment on our YouTube. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.